Hey, how's it going? And this is a follow-up to the previous video on compositing video into against a background, a CGI background. And there's a couple gotchas in here and a couple little tricks that, you know, I'll let you know. And so all we're going to try to do here is we're not going to try to work on our keying. I'll, you know where all those adjustments are if you click on the media plate here. They're all in here. And you can go in and adjust and play around with all of them. Like if we come in here and go to material parameters under chroma keying. There's a bunch of options in here you can play around with. And then despill has some options too. And then also you can reselect the color. And then also erode is an option too if you come into the material parameters. So just explore the material parameters under each of those three choices. And that'll give you, and you can just see what works and what doesn't work. And so I'm just closing these up a little bit because it's kind of a crowded screen. So these are our three tools. Just play with the material parameters under each of them. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is how to make it so that when we hit play, this video starts playing. Right now, if we hit play, we're just going to go into the scene. And then I'm going to show you how to export this out. And along the way, I think there'll be some glitches. So I'll show you how to get through those as well. So to get started, we're just going to go on, uh, we're on the comp here, it doesn't really matter. And we can just go to general comp here. And there's one called output. And we need to add an array to do this. So we click that button and then we go, whoops, we click here and we click the player viewport. And that's all we have to do for that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up into the level editor here and go open blueprint. And then this will start on an event play when we press the button. And the first thing we're going to do is create a variable. So we hit plus and we're going to go media. Oops, media. And it doesn't really matter. We're going to change a type in a minute. We're just going to compile and save. Go ahead and save. This is being saved as untitled. I should have given it a name, but it's going to be saved as untitled. The whole level. And what we're going to do here is come up here to the variable type and we want to change it to an object type and it's actually called the media player. Now I want to show you something kind of tricky here. It tripped me up a couple times. When you come down with your cursor on the media player, this window flies open and it gives you four options here. So when you hover over the media player button under object types, click object reference and then that'll set that appropriately. And then we'll go compile and save again. And then it gives us a choice here to set a default value and we can set it as the media player. Then once we have that all done, we can drag the media onto the screen, get media, pull out from here, and we just have to go to open source and click that. And then for our asset is going to be our media source, our new image source. And then all we have to do is click and drag into here to start the chain we compile and save and it should be I can minimize this window though when I hit play our video starts playing which is just what we want fantastic I see some green in her hair but I honestly don't know how you could get rid of that unless you reselected the spill color you could try that and the other option is to shoot it against a green screen I mean a blue screen I don't recommend color correcting in Unreal just yet I would just try to get print out a copy of the the back screen here of the scene and bring that in as you're getting your lighting. Put this in the in your video editing software to use. You can also, once the footage renders out, you can bring it into something like DaVinci Resolve and put a mask over the foreground and adjust it that way as well. But you get much better control in an external program, I think. So now I wanted to show you this. If at any point you're clicked on the comp, the screen is black like that, or you're here and it's black, you might think it's broken, but it's not. It just means that the video has stopped looping. So you gotta come into the content browser, hit the media player, double click this, and the video starts up again. So there's certain things that seem to glitch it, make the video stop looping. So I don't know if that's a bug or that's by design, I, I don't know, but everything's still working right now. So the last thing we wanna do is to try to export this out and when I did this in Unreal Engine 5, I was hitting some snags. So let's see if we run into those problems. So the first thing we got to do is come to the plugins and we're looking for the take recorder. 
and then we have to restart unfortunately so now we're going to save select it and it's going to reload up with the take recorder in and that's what we need to be able to record this I keep getting all these pop-up uh, boxes everywhere okay so now here we are if we go to composure what I was going to show you is this could be a glitch now this is the weirdness of everything I see the take recorder here right if I click on it it actually automatically opens up the sequencer which would be great except for there's nothing under my composure tab so take recorder came in I click sequencer but then when I go to my composure tab I don't see anything so all we have to do is go back into our level which is the untitled level so if I double click this this will load up our level and then there's our composition but now if I click take recorder again you'll notice that the sequencer doesn't open up so what we have to do is we have to come over here and click clear pending take and yes I want to clear it and then it opens up the sequencer and now we have our composition so I hope you saw all that so this was endlessly frustrating <laughs> for me now here's the last trick and then the rest is just pretty straightforward you need to click and drag this into the sequencer folder so what you do is you I'm left clicking and dragging on the sequencer sequencer opens up once it does then I drag on down here to the timeline once it's down here on the timeline it's basically just like a standard recording that you would do on on anything all you got to do is record it out so let's say I want to record out 10 seconds that kind of lengthens the timeline here I can just go ahead and double click this and let's just say I want it to be 500 I want a view of 500 frames if I I believe it's this one no that's not the one it's this one we'll kind of zoom in so I can see the whole track so what I can do is I want to just drag this out let's say to the 10 second mark so I'll drag that bar out see that red bar and then just drag it out to like about the 10 second mark like right there and this will be the area that I'll record and so I think we're good to go then all we have to do is click on this ironically we we don't want to render out as an AVI sequence we want to we want to render out as a PNG so we're gonna render out in the same format we came in with and we have it at 30 frames per second compression quality is 100 which is the highest and then we can pick a folder on our desktop somewhere I'll just pick right there select folder and then all I have to do is capture movie and the whole thing will render out and that's it so be patient take notes and I, I hope you found this helpful I really do so thanks for subscribing and watching take care and I'll talk to you next time